Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today with me, I have my daughter, Ricky Radcliffe. And together, we're reviewing Creature Comforts by Kids Table Board Games. And if you're, you know, used to the channel, you probably haven't seen her before. And that's because this is her first video on the channel. And we actually picked, or she picked, a few games behind us on the mantle. Potential future games to cover, review, if she has fun here. We have no idea how this is going to go. This is a complete experiment. This is our, like, seventh take, but nonetheless. And Creature Comforts is a game by Kids Table Board Games who puts out family weight games. This is a this is the same publisher or parent company or whatever of Burnt Island Games and this is going to be a family weight worker placement game with adorable woodland creatures. Think Evadel, think Root, but more family friendly, more of an introduction to the genre. Something that is both pretty satisfying as an adult as well as rewarding or introductory as a good in entry point for younger gamers or maybe just not even younger gamers, sometimes new people to the hobby. It is a deeply, deeply is probably the wrong word. It is a satisfying game with a lot of strategic decisions and I had a lot of fun playing it. I'm skipping to the spoiler part of the review, but we're going to have a whole conversation about the game. We're going to talk about the game together. We'll figure it out and you can go ahead. Let's go ahead and just drop the dice over here and go ahead and grab the other one. And so this basically, yeah, we got the other one. Perfect. So over, I'm going to do a quick overview of the game and then we'll just jump into a conversation. I have a bit of an idea of her opinion of the game because, well, we played it already. And so I know, well, I know her reactions to the game, whether she likes it or not. But past that, we're going to have a conversation shortly, but I'll do a quick overview first. And the, the very quick overview is in the game, every player is going to roll their personal dice and that will give them some idea of what they're going to be able to do on their turn. Once you have your personal dice rolled, simultaneously, we can all take our workers, putting them on various locations on the board. And that will give you options you can do. And I say simultaneously because there's not a lot of competition here. You can go on different spots. There's going to be a few spots where someone can potentially get something first. But for the most part, it's, you know, anyone can go to the same spot at the time. And as far as that, the first player gets the early bird, gets the warm token over here. And so once you put out your workers, once you've done that, so you have your dice that you know what they have, you put out your workers. And then the first player is going to roll the common dice. Go ahead, Rex. Anyone can use the common dice, He's, and and, uh, and but you can only use one common dice. You can you can you can use each common dice once per turn. Everyone can use them, but you can on your turn you can only use them w w each dice one time. So effectively, once you have those common dice rolled, you'll combine them. The first player will go first, combining their personal dice together with the common dice, and go on, use the various locations on the board. So many of the locations just require one dice. Sometimes they require any dice. Sometimes they require a specific value. And specifically, these meadow areas at the top, the meadow and forest, and forest up at the top, will have specific locations with specific triggers. So for instance, you might have to have three dice where the total is a 11 or higher. You might have to have two dice with the total is below five. There are different combinations and configurations of how you place your dice in order to do those locations. And the one that I put my meeple on is you pick a number and then it has to be the number right after that and then the number right after that one. So basically a like straight. Like four, five, six, one, two, three, two, three, four, and so forth. Yes, and so you're gonna, and these meta one force locations, they're gonna rotate every round because you have eight rounds to the game. And one of the things that's fun about the game is, well, first of all, the meadow and forest locations are constantly changing. So you never have a firm picture of exactly what resources are available because some of the resources are fairly commonly available, such as rocks, coins, or whatnot. But most of the resources, you don't have a firm picture of what's going to be available and you have to plan around the uncertainty of woodland life. Additionally, you're gonna have these adorable visitors at the inn who are also going to rotate and also shift up the rounds because you get, they're going to come into play both giving you a worker placement location with different options as well as very often something that will affect the general board in terms of maybe improvements cost a little less. Maybe when you go to the forest locations, there's one extra wood and things like that. And the worker mall, his ability is all month long. That means the entire the, round. His entire round. And st stone and coins may be used as each other when building improvements or crafting comforts. That means if you have, if, if you need three rocks, but you have three coins and don't have three rocks, then you can use three coins instead. Yeah, and so basically these comforts over here are these cards, which you're going to be getting primarily for end game points. And these improvements are things that will give you a better tableau building to an extent. You can have up to four of them, and each one will give you a different ability. So for instance, uh, this one over here, this umbrella, is each turn you may add one or two to one of the family dice. So they give you different abilities that will make the general game a little easier, give you things you can do, and additionally points as well. And, and you see, and these little houses are on these four hearts. You take a house off and put it on, on an improvement every time you get an improvement. 
First, you uncover one heart, one extra point, then two extra points, four extra points, and then one extra point again. One extra point again. So effectively, you can get an additional eight points, up to eight points, as you slowly build out these improvements and put your houses on them to represent ownership. And that is basically the the whole game. You can do that for eight rounds, constantly acquiring more resources, trading them in to get improvements and comforts, which will give you points ultimately. And ultimately, points is how you win the game. But points are adorable. They're represented by little hearts. That's the points in this game. Uh, past that, there's some cute little things, mechanisms, such as the fact that you know these little tokens here that look like band aids. These are plus or minus one to your dice, and you can get them both through abilities or if you ever have a worker placed that didn't actually benefit you because the nature of rolling these white dice after the fact is sometimes you hope that you're going to get certain numbers and you don't necessarily get them and that means you might have to pull a worker back without getting anything mm -hmm. and that's basically how you play creature comforts and with that let's get into you know our opinions let's talk about the game let's talk about different things so to begin with what did you think of the game i i really liked it and i think it's a it's a really good game, but if you but if you have a busy schedule, you shouldn't play it. You should play it when you have a free schedule because it's a really good game, but it's very long. So what she means by that is the game is rated at forty five minutes long. If you look at the box, it's rated at forty five minutes long. Now it took us longer than forty five minutes. I would say our first game probably would have landed at the forty five to sixty minute range. Keep in mind, we often, especially when we're playing with our kids awake, we often have our games with you know a baby in the background. Sometimes we have people dropping in. So I would say it took us about an hour and a half, but that was with with interruptions and specifically for for Ricky an hour and a half long game is longer than the games we usually play I'd say there are times mm -hmm. we play games that long but it's certainly the exception I think had it come in at 45 minutes probably would have been a little more to your your you know length ideal length or whatnot and I think that it's really cute how they how you have how how the f pictures on the forest and meadow change as the seasons change but there is no winter in this game as the game's all about getting ready for winter or and you make your own little ends this is me looking through the cards as i didn't even notice that i didn't realize that but she's exactly correct uh you're going to have three different seasons fall summer and spring well spring summer and fall and then you'll have winter printed on the board itself and those locations the art will change to reflect the changing seasons which i totally missed and I and I and I, the reason I don't I don't because I pay attention to details. Wow. I pay attention to a lot of details and and game board game art. So that's my daughter on camera telling me that I don't pay enough attention, which is not exactly what she said, no. but nonetheless. Okay, so Ricky, so what specific aspects of the gameplay did you like the most? I I really like how you can trade things in here as many times as you want, and I also th and I also think the cards are really cute and how they. And how they did a worm on the first player marker because early bird gets the worm. Awesome. So one of these locations over here lets you trade in resources, which is not necessarily the best location to go to to get stuff. But once you have a bunch of stuff and you're trying to figure out how to make use of it for the cre for the improvements and comforts, it can be a very helpful location to go to. Uh, the comforts, one of the things that are fun about them is very often they'll give you, let's say, this one will require three resources and give you five points. But this one will require a bunch of resources, give you a bunch of points, but additionally give you points for things stored on here, which can be very helpful end game. There are additional comforts that will give you points based on having like sets of comforts. So if you have the the soup, the stew, stew and the bread all together you'll get extra points for that combination which can be a lot of fun to get and i also think it's cute how depending on what that is you you need to get specific things like the bookshelf is two wood and two books and the pie is wheat and apples and i know why all the all the stuff for of, the muffler yeah the muffler and the socks are yarn wood and apple the apple is for dyeing it making it colorful the wood is to make the loom so you can make it and the yarn well that's to sewing that's for making it yeah i've paid attention to half those things apparently and so that 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 that's those are things you didn't like those are things you did like is there anything you didn't like about the game you mentioned the length briefly that you're a little think it's a little long anything else you didn't like what well, it's a, it's a good game, ju just I think these should be a little easier to understand. Oh, the improvements? And, yeah, I think these should okay. be a little easier to understand, because I, cause I, I had no clue what half of them did. Okay. But, but, but things like the almanac, that's really easy to understand. And you take an almanac token, and it counts as a person, as a, as a permanent lessons learned. Lessons learned are these plus or minus one tokens, so when you get the almanac upgrade, you have a permanent plus or minus one every single round. Mm hmm. And I think, and, I, and other than that, I think this is a really perfect game. Awesome. And so, do you want this game? Yes. Do you recommend other people add it to their collection? Yes. But, 
But um, over here there is supposed to be a turntable. It's just because this is a prototype, so they didn't. So we just use a different dice and then rotate the dice. So what she's referring to is this river location. One of the things that they have there is a river location where you can get different things, and you rotate the river every round, changing the configuration of dice. Uh, unfortunately, in our prototype copy, this is a prototype. Good, good mention there. Uh, in our prototype copy, we were missing that little dial, and so we just improvised using literally six different dice that we rotated. But right now, there's nothing there on the board. <laughs> and with you, with you, 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 you can have three numbers to get one rock, one number to get a rock and a coin, and and two numbers to get two rocks. Yep. And that's basically, um, I guess that's mostly your opinion. I mean, uh, so my opinion overall, just to give you context for a, an adult who's playing games, um, I thoroughly played this game. Additionally, my wife, who is not a lightweight gamer by any means, as soon as we were done the game, getting the, as soon as we were done playing the game, she's like, I want this game, get this game. So she enjoyed it. It was very family friendly. It was very accessible. I agree with her. It came in a little long, but I think it's mostly the interruptions we were experiencing. I think it probably would be a 45 minute game if we were just playing it straight without, you know, all the interruptions of our lives. And overall, I really enjoyed the... I, I, I had fun, and my biggest thing was I pro probably had to tune back how competitive I was being in terms of trying to get things and perfectly min-max just because of the way that I'm used to playing games. Uh, it's not competitive in the sense that you hurt other players. It's just competitive in the sense that there is an engine going on here. There is the ability to get Tableau building of, over here on the sidebar. This is a game that, like I said, even though the company is called Kids Table Board Games, I would recommend this for either kids, uh, families who want to play games without the adults being bored, and or gateway gamers. It is appealing. The artwork's adorable. Like I said, Everdell, Root, pick any of these woodland creature games that I'm such a huge fan of. This really just joins the category. I mean, you can look at the box art. You can get a picture right there. And that would basically be, I guess, my stance from, I guess, the adult side of things or the heavy gamer side of things. And it... But if you're, if you're sad that someone else got a card that you really wanted, don't worry. There is at least four of each card, we know, because one time we had three mandolins out at once. So she's referring to some of these comforts over here. Have they have multiples. multiples. I did not realize. I think you're right. We did have four mandolins. I don't know if all of them have mandolins, but specifically that will go to the set collection aspect. If you have a set of cards that says you have to have this plus this plus that, don't worry. There are multiple cards. And also one of these visitors to the inn does let you pull through the discard pile, which can be a fun way of getting those cards you might have missed. But what? And I also like how there's a lot of plot twists because... Um, what are you looking for? I'm looking for an immediately one. For which one? Oh, because let's say you, you, you this little guy turned up. It's an immediately. In turn order, each player must pick two different goods in the supply to give to the player on their left. That means you have to do it as so immediately as soon as the, as soon as you are ready for the round. Yeah, some of these visitors will have uh, get abilities that affect the whole round. Some of them will have immediate, immediate abilities, like you said, as soon as they reveal them, you do something. And on the side, there are numbers, yeah. at which and and different numbers will able to give you different different goods if you go to the end. Yeah, so each visitor will have a full range of one through six. That so when you go to the end, depending on what that range is, depends on what that visitor will grant you. And that basically is Creature Comforts, a game that I wholeheartedly recommend, a game that we plan on adding to our collection, because we have, we specifically, it's often, it's often very hard to find the perfect game that is, simultaneously keeps the adults invested and involved without feeling that they are playing something that is, well, they'd rather not be playing, while also pulling the kids into the game, because they're accessible enough, cute enough, give you enough, you know, fun stuff to do that the kids feel invested. I was a little bit worried about this. I think this might be your first worker placement game. I'm not sure if you've played worker placement before. Have you played worker placement where you put guys down in a spot on the board to get something? Um, I might have, but I pro but but I probably won't remember it, because I, because I will probably only, this is probably the second time I've only played it, if I a type of game like this if I ever have. So this may well be my daughter's it. first Euro game, first worker placement, and she enjoyed it, we enjoyed it, and we recommend Creature Comforts. Uh, keep your eye out for this game. It will be on Kickstarter. Well, it either already is on Kickstarter or will shortly be on Kickstarter. Either way, I'll try to include a relevant link down below. Until next time, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co., and this is Ricky Radcliffe, technically from Board Game Co., I guess. And until next time, have a good one.